welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to take a look at a very interesting quote that I heard on a talk that was done by Marianne Williamson. Recently, I was listening to her while doing the ironing because some of her talks are really long and you can get away with, you know, just putting her on in the background while you're doing the ironing. By the way, this is that kind of video from me to you today because I'm not going to be using the whiteboard or doing any of that. So you can just have me on in the background while you're doing something different. Um, so as I say, this, this video is inspired by a quote that I heard in her talk and she, I can't remember exactly what she was talking about, but she just rattled off this quote by Sigmund Freud. And the quote is, intelligence will be used in the service of the neurosis. And I thought, wow, it made me stop. And I just thought, that line sums up so much. And I'm going to get into this and kind of break it down and, and tell you what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking here. So I heard that quote and I thought, yes, I need to do a video about this because sometimes when I'm working with clients, it's really interesting to see when, when people get their chart and, and they're new to looking at their chart and they haven't seen their chart before and they're coming to grips with all these strange terms and they're coming to grips with, oh no, my Mercury's debilitated and oh dear, Jupiter's in retrograde and oh no, I have this. And you know, people freak out over so many things, right? And I'm here to tell you that these words sound bad, but they are not bad, right? These are not bad terms at all. And I'm going to tell you the top five terms that people freak out and they think they're terrible. And I'm going to explain how all of this links in to this beautiful quote by Sigmund Freud. So the quote is, intelligence will be used in the service of the neuroses. Right. It's so true because this happens with astrological intelligence as well. Right, how am I going to bring this concept in? How am I going to tie all these strange things together? I'm going to do this in five minutes, hopefully. Right, so in the title of this video, I've got a draft title on my screen, which is something like Astrological Intelligence. Are you a chef or a killer? Right, so now I'm adding a new thing in here. Okay, how am I going to bring all this together? Right, you will see. Come on a journey with me. You will see how all of this works. This works with a knife, okay? So if I give you a knife, right? If you are a chef, if you, if you take the knife, you go, oh, brilliant, I'm glad you gave me this because now I can cut up all these vegetables and I can cut up fruits and do all this amazing thing and I can make you a beautiful dish, right? And you've used that knife and you've created a beautiful dish for me to eat. How wonderful. Some people will look at the knife and they'll go, oh, brilliant, I'm so glad you gave me this knife because I am furious at that person over there. And quite frankly, and, you know, I mean, I don't know, they might take it and they might do something that I certainly wouldn't approve of. No one would approve of go and harm someone. It's unthinkable, it's unimaginable, but it happens on this earth, right? So it's the same tool being used in two very different ways. Okay, so I reckon, you know, I mean, well, let's use me for an example. If you give me a knife, of course I'm going to make food. I'm going to make a dish and I'm going to make something creative and beautiful and nice out of it, right? And I imagine that everybody who comes and watches my channel would do the same. But there are people who would take a tool like a knife and they would go and harm other people. So let's bring back that quote. The quote was... I'm going to read it exactly, and I like to be precise. That's why I look at my screen and I like to quote these things exactly. Sigmund Freud, intelligence will be used in the service of the neuroses. So th this is so, so perfect for astrology because unfortunately, astrological intelligence is sometimes used in a harmful way. 
and people use it to self-harm. Okay, so what are the top five terms that people use in a negative way? Now, I'm just going to rattle them off right now. Debilitation, great enemy sign or enemy position, low Shadbala scores, combustion or retrogression. Any one of these five, people hear, oh no, my planet's debilitated and they freak out, right? Or great enemy sign, oh no, Saturn's in Leo, oh, that's terrible, right? Low Shadbala scores, um, you know, they might think, oh, my moon is diminished, oh no, you know, does that mean I'm mad, right? Combustion, something's too close to the sun, it's being burnt, right? And they, they, they feel badly about that, they think, oh no. Uh, retrogression, people think, sometimes people think when there's a retrograde, oh no, I shouldn't buy a car, or I shouldn't do this, or I shouldn't do that. And to me, that is, that's what happens when you are brand new to astrology and you haven't studied a lot of charts or you haven't seen a lot of celebrity charts or you haven't really gone deeply and studied it properly. A lot of people, when they just touch on these terms, they freak out or they think, oh, that's why I'm terrible at this or that's why this isn't going right or that's why X, Y, Z or so on and so forth. And... I'm here to say that please don't, please don't take these terms in a bad way. For a start, I have all these terms. I've got debilitation in my birth chart. I've got great enemy sign planets. I've got, yes, uh, some Shadbala scores that could be deemed quite low. Uh, I've got combustion. I've got quite a bit of combustion, actually. Retrogression I do not have, but I have been observing every Mercury retrograde um, for many, many years, definitely at least since 2008. When I, when I used to read um, Susan Miller, I used to consume her every month, and I just met someone in a cafe today who mentioned Susan Miller, and it was so amazing because I haven't read Susan Miller for a very long time, but I used to read her avidly every month uh, in about in those early years in 2008 and onwards. And I used to watch every single Mercury retrograde and nothing ever happened, right? So retrogression is one that I know not to worry about. The other thing, so let's go for some celebrity charts here. Celebrity chart, retrogression, Mark Zuckerberg, check him out. He has got it's retrograde city. He's got retrogrades everywhere. He's got Jupiter. I'm pretty sure he's got Jupiter, Saturn, and I'm tempted to check, but then equally I'm probably going over time. Let me see how we're doing for time. I am going on quite a bit. So I'm probably not going to check his chart, but he's got quite a lot. So if you're interested in retrograde, have a look because I personally think it's the retrograde that has made his business go huge. Retrograde simply just means more power. If you have a retrograde planet, congrats to you. Feel good about it. You know, if you've got a combust planet, feel good about that. It's very close to the sun. Yes, it's being burnt slightly, but it doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. I've got lots of combustion and how I tend to see it, one of the ways I tend to see it is, um, well, one of the ways I tend to see it recently is that it gives you, the nature of the performance that you'll do might be shorter. So it's like you look at a gymnast you know, they don't perform for an hour at a stretch. You know, their, their performance, they do their three-minute beam routine and that's it, right? And, and they'll spend, they might spend years training for that. So that's where you've got the Saturn coming in, spending years. But that little performance that they're giving, you know, that could be just, um, there'll be sun, but there'll be some, uh, something close to the sun there, Um you know, it could be Venus, could be Mercury, could be both. Uh, something will be clipping, making that performance short and sweet kind of thing. I tend to see that when Sun is alone, then that person's output or, you know, it could be quite big. It could be known for a long time as well. Um, but I will bring that up in another video, I think. Uh, low Shadbala scores, is that a bad thing? No. That's not a bad thing. I've seen that in my chart. I've seen that in the charts of famous people. You know, sometimes you start developing theories. You see, oh, this person has a low moon shadbala. But then when you compare other people and you see other people who have that, we can't particularly say definitively 
any one thing is bad, right? Uh, to do so would be to do this thing that Freud is talking about. Intelligence will be used in the service of the neuroses. So that, and it brings it back to the knife thing. It's like you're just using the language of astrology to communicate what's inside of you. If you're a positive person, if you've spiritually worked on your stuff, you can really use the language of astrology to tell a very empowering and inspiring story about every single human being on the planet. You can show the, the great potential of, of what it is they're here to do. The chart acts as, you know, this thing of promises that you've come to live, live up to, you know. Um, if you're a really negative person, you will use the language of astrology just to say why things are going wrong in a person's life and that, oh, this chart, oh, you're doomed, it's going to be bad and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. That's terrible. And I see people doing that to themselves and I see people doing that about other people as well. People write off people. They say, oh, she's got Saturn Moon, oh, forget about her. It's like, whoa, you can't just use this language as a shortcut way of throwing someone in the bin because they've got one particular conjunction. It's madness. Do you know what I mean? Because I've seen many people with Saturn Moon do such amazing things in life and create businesses and uh, this very high profile media guy here in the UK who is, uh, you know, he's got quite a following and he's doing amazing work. He's got a Saturn Moon. In his first house, I think, he's doing amazing stuff. I'm pretty sure Adele has one as well, but I've also heard some astrologers say things like, oh, Saturn Moon's terrible and things like that. So, you know, intelligence will be used in the service of the neurosis. I think it's such a terrific quote and it's really something to contemplate. If, if you're really into astrology, contemplate this, this line and really see, all right, how am I using the language of astrology? Am I using it to empower myself? Am I using it to inspire myself? And if you've got negative things going on inside, my advice would be clear that first. Do the spiritual work first. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Um, feel good inside. And then go to astrology, you know, and and. It's a tool and, and we can use it in such beautiful ways and use it like a knife to create a beautiful dish, you know, to give to yourself. You know, this is something you're giving to yourself. So, you know, do clear up any negativity within you first before you study astrology. That's my advice. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Let's see how long I've been talking for. I think this is, we've hit the mark where it's time for me to wrap up. But stay tuned. I'll be back with another video next week. And I'll see you next time.